This is me 10 years ago. I was a teacher living with my boyfriend and our cat. One day I was taken ill with flu. On the third day, I slipped into unconsciousness. They think it was ADEM encephalitis in my brainstem, but they still can't be sure to this day. It made my brain swell up and my muscles stop working. I was trapped in a vegetative state. It seemed like no time to me, but it was four months. I wasn't responding to anything at all. As far as the doctors could tell, my brain was no longer working. Until a scan found me. Kate was a very interesting patient because uh, when we saw her 10 years ago, uh, nobody had, had put anybody like her into a scanner, so we really had no idea what to expect. That's Adrian Owen. He's a neuroscientist at Cambridge. His team just happened to be researching into this area at the right time. We just thought we uh, would put her in the scanner and show her lots of bright coloured images to see whether we could activate the visual cortex, the areas of her brain that we knew typically respond uh, to visual stimulation. And what we saw was exactly the same thing that you'd expect to see in a healthy, awake person if we scanned them in exactly the same situation. We activated an area known as V1. We know quite a lot about the areas of the brain that are involved in uh, perceiving and recognising faces. There's an area known as the fusiform face area and it will activate in, in all of us when we see a face. And we showed Kate a, a series of faces, and we compared these to a series of scrambled visual images that had no facial information. And again, as in the first scan, uh, we saw activation that was identical to the activation that we would typically see in a healthy volunteer. I had loads of questions like, where am I? Why am I here? What has happened? They never even explained to me how they were feeding me. They said I couldn't feel pain, but they were so wrong. I just couldn't tell people. Regaining consciousness isn't like switching a light back on. I can't even tell you the day on which my brain started working again, but it did. It took me five months to be able to smile. 1999, it was about two years after Kate had become ill. Uh, she was in a um, uh, home for respite care and the people at the, uh, the home wanted to know what her intellectual uh, level was like. So they asked me to see her. That's Barbara. She's a world famous neuropsychologist and she saw me in the nursing home they'd put me in. We did a fairly thorough assessment uh, and it was obvious that Kate's intellectual functioning was normal. She didn't really need any help with her cognitive deficits because she doesn't have any. But uh, she's, when we first got to know Kate, when I first got to know Kate, she was incredibly angry at what had happened to her and how she'd been treated and very distressed. I think she's come to terms with the fact that she's never going to get back to her old self and that she's had to live with this loss, um, you know, loss of her physical abilities, loss of her boyfriend, loss of the opportunity to have children, loss of a job, all those things. But this is me now. Those are my legs and this is my body. I feed myself through a peg tube. I've got no sense of smell or taste. I am going to help others. 
she's a true heroine. So I think she's coped with these um, pretty awful things that have happened to her in a very admirable way. And um, she's helped other people with similar problems. She is now, she communicates with the world, she's written a book, she helps other people with problems, she's got very strong views on life and you know I've never met anybody else like Kate and um, I think she's an inspiration. But I am still angry about the way I was treated. They should never let people die without assessing them properly. Nobody had showed that a patient could activate absolutely normally in spite of a diagnosis of vegetative state. And in this sense, Kate's scan set off a, a whole lot of new research in this area, uh, looking at other things that some vegetative patients uh, may be able to do. She's made me think again about these life and death decisions that are made about people who are in the vegetative state. I mean, Kate herself feels very strongly you should never let these people die. We're trying to develop this technique uh, to be able to tell us a little bit more about uh, the, the abilities uh, of any patient who can respond in this way. I used to be much more uh, accepting of those decisions, I think, and now I'm not at all sure because it's so easy to demonstrate for some of these people that at some level they are aware of what's going on even if they can't show that behaviourally. We may be able to develop the technique to allow a rudimentary type of communication in order to convey uh, a particular message, for example, to say the word yes. It is not a bad dream. This has happened to me. But I will keep on fighting and never give up.